Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Revelation chapter 19. And after these things, Babylon phone, a great warehouse store selling and buying of the mark. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. Now the people are speaking. How many are in heaven? Much. What's that? Much. Saying, Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. That's what it means. Salvation. I got salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God we'll be there and this is what we'll be saying for true and righteous are his judgments he just judged that whore and we will strike up in voice to say after the whore falls Lord you're right your salvation he told he gave the, the announcement we read before, right in the middle, said, my people come out of her. And we give glory for getting victory over that system. And he gets honor for those who probably did get out. And we're in heaven. And power, he called us in a rapture before Jacob's trouble. I don't know what you do if you believe you're going to go through Jacob's trouble as a church. For he has judged a great whore. Now you see those that are in heaven, we're going to be rejoicing over the victory of that great whore. Why? If it's who I think it is, that great whore is, is around today. If I think I know who that is, and I could be wrong, but most of my family has been condemned by that great whore. I believe I know one of my aunts. I, 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 say 95% probably in hell because of that system. I have an uh, uncle, I don't know. My grandfather was saved as a Catholic. I wonder about my, my great grandparents, Polish Jews. And then there was my there was another Polish, uncle. Polish Jews. A Polish Catholics. No Jews. That'd be a Polish Jew. That's a Catholic. That's evil. Which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. Let's save the trees. Let's save the whales. Let's save the manatees. Why? This great system is corrupting the world. You know how many people in Mexico are going to hell thinking that they're doing right by God? It's amazing how many people have fallen for this system. How priests can be involved in sexual sins and they just brush it off. But a non-priest, someone who's not of that, and you put them in a jail and you fry them. Doesn't that tell you something about that system? And has avenged the blood of his saints at her hand. So she has killed saints. Someone might say, well, today that's ISIS. Is that built on seven mountains? Are their colors red and purple? Is it a she? I don't think ISIS would be represented as a she. I was going to say, the Catholics call it Mother Church. So, I think God knows the difference, even though Americans don't know the difference between he and she. 
if you're going to point a religious system as a her, uh, the last one I would point would be Islam. So I could be wrong. I could benefit a doubt. I could be wrong. You don't support Islam, though. I don't support Islam. Because they're killing saints, too, and they'll be charged as murderers. They got it confused by Satan. They think bloodshed is Christians that will save their soul, but Christian bloodshed is shed by the Christian that started it, Jesus Christ. Again, they said, Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. I don't know how many Christians shout Hallelujah and know what the meaning is. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. So I don't know much about about science, but the, the law of thermodynamics holds true for the eternity. You cannot make something can be completely annihilated. There is going to be, if it's matter, it's going to be some kind of matter. Now, even though smoke goes up and you can't see it no more, it's there. And the smoke of this system is going to be there for all eternity. It's going to have no rest. Where those that are Christians are going to have rest and a foundation upon the golden street of New Jerusalem. The Jews will have their feet on the ground of the new earth. And the four and twenty elders, there they are again. The four beasts, there they are again. Fall down and worship God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah. Everybody in heaven is rejoicing over this city that fell. You remember the ones who are not rejoicing? Those that are on the earth, those that are the, the shipmen, the one that supplies her, the one that buys from her. So there's a big difference between the lost world and Christianity. And a voice came out of the throne. I'd like to know who this voice is. And when you hear these voices, we're going to hear it when we're in heaven. Because it's yet future. And we're going to stand around. Now, is it God? I don't know. We're going to be standing around that throne praising God with the 424 elders, with, the, with this four beasts. And we're going to start hearing these voices coming out of that throne. Be prepared. It's going to shock some Christians. <laughs> what was that? And we all will turn to that worldly Christian and say, Didn't you read your Bible? Didn't you study? You don't know what that is? Well, it shouldn't be what that, because I don't know what it is. You didn't know that was coming? They just had a heart attack when they realized Satan's in heaven now as a dragon. Like, whoa! A voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God. So it can't be God. <laughs> All ye his servants, I'm his servant, and ye that fear him, I fear him, not enough, but small and great, young and old. That's kind of interesting, small and great. Up in glory. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, again, for the Lord God omnipotent, that is unlimited power, reigneth. God is always and will be the king of all. He just gave it to Adam, and Adam gave it to Satan. And Satan's going to reclaim that, that, that kingdom of his by burning in hell. After he's chained up for a thousand, after he's chained up and for a thousand years he's going to set loose. Then he'll just give it all to Jesus Christ by burning in the lake of fire. Let us be glad and rejoice. And give honor to him, God, Jesus Christ, but it's Jesus Christ. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. So we have not been married to Christ yet. When we get to the end of the seven years of tribulation period, then the marriage comes. 
and his wife has made herself ready. Judgment is definitely over. Because that's the way we make ourselves ready. We get the wood, hay, and stubble burnt off. And some of us will have gold to wear. Some of us will have silver to put on. And then we'll have, some of us will have the, uh, the precious stones. Like a bride should be adored. And to her, the bride, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Clean and white. Now, where did you get the idea that white for a wedding? There it is. The white means virginity. No, it don't. No, I've known plenty of brides that wore white and they were not virgins. Throw that one out the window. She's clean and white because she's been judged at the judgment seat of Christ and now is found faithful and true. You can't poke any Christian up right now from, from the earth and bring him to heaven and he'd be clean and white. Uh-uh, not without that judgment. Including myself. For, now here's a definition, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Now, why didn't they say that when you mentioned a white dress? And the white? That's the righteousness of, because who believes it? The world don't believe that. So we'll just say it's it's a thing of purity and virginness. With the white, the world doesn't know what virgin is anymore. Righteousness of the saints. Well, that righteousness came by the, the groom, Jesus Christ. This garment that we're going to wear came by God. You imagine how this thing is going to sparkle? You like Jesus on the mountain transfiguration? He's just sparkling. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now that is not us. It's our supper. And when you go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's the Jews out of tribulation period. Which somebody's got it messed up thinking it's the Jewish Gentile. John said he's the friend of the bridegroom. This is where we're going to see John the Baptist. Guaranteed. Not as the groom, not as the bride, but as a friend and the guest of the wedding. And Jews that are saved that did not get saved during the church age. Gentiles who got saved in whatever dispensation that they were in, like Naaman the Syrian, who had leprosy, who did what God told him to do, well, he's not going to be the bride. He's going to be invited to the, to the, to the bridal marriage. you got to get your Bible right. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth some people are going to step up i'm using john the baptist i'm sure of him somebody's going to step up john the baptist will come join us as the bride and he's going to no that's not my position if you read the gospels these are the true sayings of god well, that's kind of interesting what sayings about the marriage supper of the land. There's the bride and there's the guest. And I fell at his feet to worship him. As any Catholic would do. Or a Pope or a priest. And he said unto me. See thou do it not. Get off your feet boy. This is twice John has done this. And Peter says this to Cornelius when Cornelius falls down to, to kiss his, his holy toenails which Peter says get up I myself in a man now watch what this person says and you run this back to Paul's and you run back to the epistles of John I am thy fellow servant that's kind of interesting
Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. The marriage of the Lamb has come, and to his wife, which made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arraigned in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. He's who is this he? Verse 6, I heard as a voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters. And then when we come to verse 9, it says, He. We've gone from multitude to one person, and he addresses John as, I'm your fellow servant. Wouldn't it be interesting if that is John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ? He said, I must, he must increase, I must decrease. Well, I'm not putting less position, but does the usher of a wedding party get more glory than the groom himself? I throw not. I fell at his feet and worshipped him. He said to me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, Jew or saved, that have the testimony of Jesus, so he's saved by Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This guy's saved. He's a human. Was a human. Kind of interesting. Who is he? I don't know. A lot of things I don't know. I'll find out when I get there. And if I'm able, as a bride, I'll step up to this guy and say, Who are you? I mean, wouldn't a bride go up to somebody she doesn't know and say, Why are you here? Who are you? And I saw, notice how John sees, 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 sees. And I saw heaven open. Go see that in Revelation chapter 4 when the church went up. The heaven opens, now the church is coming down. And behold, a white horse. And we ran in problems, I think it was Revelation 5, between the white horses. We'll see who's on this white horse and what follows him. And you go back, I think it's uh, Revelation 5, and you, you see the characteristics of that white horse and the characteristics of this white horse. Revelation 5. Revelation 5. It says, And I saw, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown and given unto him he went to conquer and to conquer he has war famine death and hell and people dying let's see what this horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true that other horse riding in wasn't given a name Jesus Christ is faithful and true I am the way the truth and the life and in righteousness he does judge, amen, and make. Well, I gotta remove that out of my Bible because God wouldn't have war. Thou shalt not kill God, but God governs wars against sin. Now he's not. For if you go to war for oil, his eyes, Jesus' eyes, were as a flame of fire. That little baby that was born in Bethlehem is angry. And his head were many crowns. Go back to Revelation 5. It had one crown. Many now you know what I'm going to, here I'm going again. I'm going to say this is what I think. This is what I believe. I believe those many crowns are the are the five crowns that Christians get or could get. I'm gonna go so far, and this is my own teaching. I can't prove it. I'm gonna go so far as that Jesus said, "The first shall be last, and the last shall be first." Let's say we we start off with the last Christian to get saved. He gets judged first. We go all the way down the line. And then we get Peter, possibly Andrew, Andrew Peter. One of those two are going to be the last one to be judged. It's hard to tell which one. But the Bible says Andrew went and got Peter. 
but the Bible also says Jesus saw Peter. Okay. Now I want to be it's amazing at the judgment seat of Christ that after Andrew or Peter, whichever one. Can you imagine Jesus Christ stepping up at the judgment seat of Christ? Now watch me. And they lay down everything at Jesus' feet, and the fire come, and there is absolutely no ash at all. And maybe that moment we give him his crowns off our heads. I, you, you can take that and throw it in the garbage can if you want. That is not doctrinal. That is not found in the Bible. But I do believe he's going to get the five crowns. Because all five crowns fit him. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Now, is that a contradiction? No man knew. I mean, the Christians don't know who he is. The bride does not know who he is. That's not the statement. No man knew. Well, who would be man in the context of this application of Scripture? The ones on the earth. He is coming back to a group of people on this earth after the seventh year. And they have no idea who he is. Or at least they don't know who his name is. Satan is going to ruin and wipe out all has to do with Jesus Christ for himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And we read other places when he stomps the lost men. And the blood goes up to the bridles of the horses. Now watch this. And his name is called the Word of God. What lost man at the end of seven years is going to know what the Word of God is? Run that back to John 1.1. 1, 1. There he is. Run that back, and I can never get it right, but First John, where, where they removed that verse, says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. They removed that verse out of there. Well, uh, you, you lost the context of Revelation 19, 13. That fits in those verse references of John 1, 1 and 1 John, and here to say that word is Jesus Christ, and that verse is omitted out of modern Bible, so you have omitted omitted God Jesus Christ the word and if you don't think he's God go back and read John 1 1 again because it says that word is God and is of God and is with God to make the Trinity like wow what is that and notice who wrote who the word is there's one gentleman when he wrote the, the gospel of John when he wrote the first epistle of John and then when he wrote Revelation, he, he has given his own scriptural references in different times. Listen, he has been sitting on the island of Patmos. He has been dumped in boiling liquid. Probably in much pain to be thinking about, oh, what did I say in the, the gospel of myself? Oh, what I, oh. oh, yeah, and then, I, then I wrote a letter to somebody. Oh, what was that letter? Oh, man, I can't read that. Impossible. Impossible. All right, ready. Joel chapter 2, when you, the next. The armies which were in heaven, armies. God is a militant God. Revelation 19, 14. And the armies, verse 11 at the end, and make war. How can you say you're going to be the tribulation 144,000 and you haven't read the Bible and to turn around and say, oh, we don't take part in any wars? The Bible says that God is for war and he has an army. You are just heathen. You are wrong. And you forbid the people to read the Bible because somebody has a Jehovah Witness might say, War, okay. And the arm wait a minute. Why is my people say we can't join the military if God has a war and he has armies? What's the contradiction here? Whatever you call your leader of the hall.
You see how Satan blinds the people? They can't see the Bible. They can't see the truth. And the armies which were in heaven followed him, Jesus, upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, went back to verse 8, and to her was granted that she should be it rained. And That's us. So there's those fairy tales a uh, prince charming on his horse, white horse, always a white horse, and the beautiful fair maiden on her horse as they ride off into the sunset, happily forever after. Now watch what it says about her, white and clean. It is definitely, definitely after the judgment seat of Christ. See what happens is, all right, you take this bride to be your awful letter wife, I do. You bride, you take him to be. I do. I pronounce you husband and wife. Let's have the dinner party. Let's get everybody together. Let's have a great celebration. Oh, okay, celebration's over. Oh, husband, what are we going to do? We're going on honeymoon. We are? Yeah, where's the honeymoon? Wait till I show you what, what I've done for you. I fixed the place just great for you. But first, we got to go clean it. Let me clean the, the earth for you and see what I got prepared for you. Read Joel chapter 2 about this army. So, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That's called the word of God. That with it he should smite the nations. Goats. Bad. And he shall rule them. With a rod of, of iron. So he smites a nation. He shall rule them. There are nations that do not get smitten. There are nations that are still there. The sheep nations. And those sheep nations that do help the Jews. Are still going to be under that rod of iron. The goat nations that did not help Israel. That received the mark. <coughs> rain to hell. And we're right behind them to see it. Our Prince Valium is going to kick butt with his sword. How many knight stories are out there with that one knight and his mighty sword? Stop stealing from the Bible, will you? And then claim the Bible's not true. Please. And he, Isaiah 63, 3 and 6. And he... was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And he has on his vesture dipped in blood of men. And on his thigh a name, well, there's three names, a name unknown, the name of the word of God, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So who is the king of kings? Is this going to be earthly kings? What did Revelation 1 say? God has made those that are saved, the church, to be kings and priests. And there are some of us who are going to reign in the millennium because we earned that right of the inheritance to reign. We will be kings. We will be given cities. And we will be kings, and the king over us will be the Lord Jesus Christ. And it looks like possibly that we'll be kings of a certain area. Then next unto that will be the apostles. And then next unto that, Jesus Christ, the king of all the earth. While the Levites do the, the, the temple service, and the Jews do what they need to do. And I don't know for worldly Christians. If they come back when we come back. Because they don't get a... The rain is... you got to earn that rain. Now whether you come back and you fall under a Christian. Who is a king. That could be a possibility. Imagine God. And how righteous and how funny God is. I mean a, a holy hole. Ha uh ha. -huh. Imagine... And this has happened to us. This has happened to me in my life. I have been, tried to be intimidated by Christians who laugh at us because we are active in the ministry. And I'm not perfect. 
I know other Christians that do the work in the ministry and they aren't ridiculed by Christians. Saved. I'm not perfect. But wouldn't it be interesting those Christians that 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 scorn Christians that do good that are going to inherit that millennium? Wouldn't it be a God ha ha? Okay, fine. You laughed at that Christian, you laughed at my son, you're gonna sit under him. He's gonna be in charge of you. Now laugh. That'd be interesting. Because there will be Christians who will not get no inheritance at all. Because they didn't earn it. They didn't deserve it. And when you, we, we do messages like that, they'll turn you off and, and say, you know, oh, you're just thinking of yourself. And, you know, you're just high on yourself. And no, you just haven't studied the Bible. You think the way America thinks. I can be bad and rotten and evil and God's still going to love me and pat me on the head. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. Ouch. That's a remarkable angel. He's standing in the sun and he doesn't get burned. Doesn't Jesus say that we will be like an angel that we're not going to marry? You'll be able to go up to the sun and say, hey, well, this, is, this is an interesting sunburn. I'm not even feeling nothing. No pain, no sorrow. No suffering. And remember, the sun is darkened at the end of seven years. But this is just before it goes dark. See, the book of Revelation is not completely in chronological. I always mess up that word. In order. There are side notes and PSs. Oh, we're going on the. Oh, wait a minute. I got to show you something really important. Okay, here. Now let's get back and try. Okay, I'll show you something important. And he cried with a loud voice. I like that one now. I'm glad I've seen that in the Bible. Somebody comes up to me, you're loud, you're screaming. <laughs> I told one the other day, have you, do you know, have you read your Bible? Well, I read my Bible. Do you realize how the angels are loud? And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, birds, all the all the marine life is gone, but the, there are still birds flying around. Come, maybe it's because why man? Maybe God does. Excuse me. Maybe God does that because man is trying to save mammals, whales, trying to save marines, sea turtles, and uh, um, manatees. But then again, he's, he's with a spotted owl. I don't know how that fits in there, but. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Boy, oh, I got a feast of you guys. You will come and dine after Jesus comes and goes. And with the with the with the eyes of fire, guess what God's gonna do with that meat from the bird? He's gonna cook it. You're not gonna eat it raw. You're gonna it's gonna be nice and charcoaled and broiled and they that ye may eat the flesh of kings, so there's kings, the flesh of captains, military leaders, ships, maybe astronauts, and the flesh of mighty men, soldiers, and the flesh of horses, and them that sit on them, horsemen, and the flesh of all men, both free and, there's that bond, slavery, tied up, put in jail. Handcuff, both small and great. So the birds are going to come and dine on God's tree. You know what birds are likened to the Bible? They're likened to Satan. So it would be saying Satan is feasting on his own people. Now God's not, ha ha, I'll show you. Mark chapter 4, and the, the fowls came up and devoured the seed. Uh, Jesus tells about this, what this parable is. And the seed is the word of God, and the fowl is Satan coming. The ones that picture Satan and his devils are eating Satan and the devil's men. You would think that Satan would tell the people before the church, Oh yeah, by the way, when this all finished, seven years, people, God's going to call his birds... And they're going to eat you. 
Does anybody want to follow me still? No, he doesn't tell them nothing. And how many people can get access to the Bible and see what their outcome? Satan rules. Really? Yeah. Out for Hitchcock, the birds. Then they got the Birdman of Alcatraz, and check out those titles. They're, they're interesting, and then the story plot. Check out birds. There, you ever watch them? You ever see the vultures? Yeah, especially down in Florida when that meat is ripe. I mean, when you see someone dead inside the highway, I mean, within an hour or two hours, it's ripe from the sun. And they're over there. They don't hold their noses. And I saw the beast, there's the Antichrist, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, well they got an army, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army, and go back to read Joel 2 on your own. I don't know if you would call this intergalactical war, but this is not Luke Skywalker facing Darth Vader. This is Satan in his armies facing Jesus Christ. And guess who? The Christians. We've got our white dress on, the fine linen of the saints, but we're going to combat. Go read Joel chapter 2. We come out victorious. And I do believe that as we come into combat, as Israel got ready to cross that Jordan River, I believe there's one thing for us to do while we kill all this enemy. While the enemy is being fought by Jesus Christ, I want you to go up to that window and grab a certain family that's waiting for us. Oh, how's that for it? Joel says something about they shall climb on top of walls. They shall not break their ranks. If any man stab us with a sword, we shall not be wounded. Makes you wonder if you're going to have one of those last minute thoughts of what earth like. Somebody stabbed you. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I got a new body. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. <laughs> we're going to get stabbed by a sword, Joel chapter 2, and we're not going to feel it. That's our new body. And we're not going to ruin our, our, our fine linen. That's white. I thought that he was going to burn them all in our path, and we were going to walk through the ash. Yeah, with that, too, and, and, but it does say, if anybody stabs us with a sword, we shall not suffer. Japanese tactic during World War II was if they were injured or if they were not injured was to lie on a field just lay there comfortably some of them got themselves under a dead body oh, gross. and they would wait for this for the Americans to come walking through then boom stab them make war against him Jesus and that sat on the horse and against his army us and the beast, the Antichrist, was taken. Look how that war went. He was taken. And with him the false prophet, Judas, that wrought miracles, charismatic, before him, which, did, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both, the false prophet and the Antichrist, were cast alive into a fire of into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Now, when we get to Revelation 20, it says, Death and hell were, 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 were given up the dead that were in them, and they stood before God, and those books were open. If your name was not in the Lamb's Book of Life, Revelation 20, when we get there, they were cast in the lake of fire. The Antichrist and Judas, the false prophet, get to jump in the lake of fire before the people do. They are in the lake of fire a thousand years before the people. When these people die, they go into hell. They'll be brought out in Revelation 20. So as God starts pitching them up in the lake of fire, Revelation 20, then they're going to join the Antichrist and the false prophet. That's their end. They don't go to hell. They go right into the lake of fire. These were cast alive in a lake of fire, burning with brimstone, the smell, and they do have noses. 
That's sulfur. Imagine breathing that in for all eternity. And the raiment were slain with the sword of him. That's Jesus getting the victory. That sat upon the horse. Which sword proceeded out of his mouth. All right, let's let's get with the with the context here. Let's not go, but let's go back to to Genesis chapter one. Let there be light. Boom. Let there be a sun, moon, and stars. Boom. Let there be water and dry land. Boom. Let all these people die. Boom. How's that? If God gives a final lesson to the world, evolution's bunk. I created it with my mouth. How's that? Since when has God, since Genesis 1, used his mouth to say something and for it to happen? Hasn't. You've jumped from Genesis 1 to Revelation 19. He says something and boom, it happens. And these people are not not worshiping Genesis 1 as the creator. If they're not evolution, they, they've been fooled as the dragon, the, the antichrist, or the false prophet. They made everything. I'll show you. I'll show you how much power the antichrist, the false prophet, and Satan has. You're dead. And they'll suffer first because of the fire that comes out of his eyes. The voice of God is so powerful that he created everything that is, seen or unseen, and he can take on the entire world with his mouth. We got a mighty God. You, you remember Satan opened his mouth against Job? He lied. Oh God, if you do this to him, he'll curse you to your faith. Lord God, I'm, I'm just a, a humbled human, and I come from my mother's womb naked, and I go back naked, and it ain't your fault. Well, Lord God, if you touch his flesh, he'll curse you to your face. Well, woman, I'll tell you, you know what? Does not God give us evil? Does he not give us good? And I'll speak as I was one of the foolish women speaking, and I'm going to serve God. It ain't his fault. The mighty word of God. I wouldn't want to mess with the word of God and change what he said, would you? Would you like to be charged with God by taking a Bible and cutting it out and taking a Bible by adding to it the very word of God? You know what we've seen in Revelation and we've seen in the Old Testament too? We've seen the voice of God speaking. Well, what do you do when you when you take that away? What do you do when you cut the the in the Gospels, the the, let, the red lettering is, is the words of Jesus, and that's good. I wish my Bible had it. i got to make my own notes. What if you were to mess with the words that Jesus spoke, and he is God? How on earth are you going to stand to God who can wipe out an army with his mouth? How are you going to stand before God that can make all the, the solar system that we can't even get all the pictures from Hubble? The beauty that is out there, the beauty that is under the oceans that we never even ever seen. And you've taken the voice of God and you changed it. And that voice of God spoke on the cross and said, it is finished. I am now going to die for every man's sin. And yet his voice said, not all will come. And watch this for a last side note in this chapter. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. They become fowl food, bird food. That's the Antichrist's great army. They're dead. And they feed the birds. That's interesting. I serve a living, powerful God. And I don't give him the much reverence that he deserves. 